What advice would you give to new people in the knife hobby? Would you suggest that they save up all of their money, four, five, six hundred bucks, and then buy something really nice? Or would you suggest that they go through a host of less expensive knives before making that big purchase? There are two factions in this opinion, and I'm curious to see which one you land in. Let me know in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, if you could smack the like button, let YouTube know that you appreciate knife content. I'm Roll Shambo, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. And today I'm asking this question because I'm giving my final thoughts on three brand new QSP knives that I think are excellent options for those looking to get some good pieces without paying four, five, six hundred dollars. That being said, I've had an opportunity to hang on to these for a couple weeks now and really get a feel for them. And I think you might be interested to hear about what I found. Let's talk about these three new QSP knives. Let's go. Here they are. I never get tired of that. You might not like my sound, my sound effects, but I never, I never get tired of that, guys. I've got three of the newest QSP offerings right here on the table in front of me, and yeah, I've already gone over these. Um, this is not going to be a super spec-heavy, in-depth review. I actually did more of that in the initial video that I did, and if you want to see that, I will, of course, link it up in the corner. This is kind of my final thoughts. You know, after living with these three knives for the last couple of weeks, and these came my way from DNK Knives. You, you know, huge shout out to them because they're so cool. Don over at DNK Knives is so cool. You know, sending these my way so that I could give my 10 cents on them. To me, that's awesome. And I've thoroughly enjoyed my opportunity to check these out, to live with them, to handle them enough to gain a good enough opinion where I feel like, you know what, it's good enough to give a final opinion. I know I'm dithering, but listen, this is my thing. I used to hang out in the comments section and leave three paragraph long opinion pieces. Now I do that, but I do that in video form. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of these knives, truly. All three of these are great knives that I think you could do a lot worse for for the money. And we're going to get into that because I do believe that the price tag plays a significant role in these knives. And if you're wondering why I have them, you know, still in the packaging, it's because I try to keep these in good shape. I do handle them, but I try to keep them in good shape. So here we are. We've got three offerings right here from QSP and I'm going to go over each one of them and kind of give my final thoughts. Uh, this is the Lark, the Kestrel, and of course the Mini Penguin. Let's start off with this guy. This is the Lark. Now, last time I mentioned that these are in fact shredded carbon fiber handles. Uh, I do want to kind of add an asterisk to those. Um, between the Mini Penguin and the Lark, it is in fact a carbon fiber overlay over G10. Now, some of you might be a little upset about that, but hear me out. It is an actual piece of carbon fiber, of shredded carbon fiber, and the prices on these are great. Not a single one of these knives costs over $70, and I truly believe that all three of these are excellent options. Let's start with the Lark. So the Lark is one of those almost gentleman-style carry knives. It's got this beautiful satin finish, single-sided captive pivot, of course, deep carry pocket clip, you know, good access, good action. You know, the blade is 14C28N. In fact, it is on all three of these. And it gives you the option of front flipper or rear flipper. And it works really, really well. It indexes well. It looks good. It's not trying to be overly busy on the design. It's just a nice, simple design. And oh yeah, you can actually flip the pocket clip to the over other side. You know, the ergos on this knife feel good. 
I'm impressed. Uh, this specific one is going for about $65. And I think that that's quite a bargain for what you get here. At the $65 price point, there's not a lot out there that gives you this level of fit and finish, this premium feel, and it definitely feels premium. This is gonna be one of those knives that's going to slice really easily. It's going to take up space in your pocket, but it's not going to make its presence known. And it's not gonna scare small children when you go to, uh, you know, open something like a bag of food or cut up an apple. It's, it's a knife knife. And this is a knife that I think a lot of people would enjoy carrying. And it's definitely one that I've enjoyed being able to handle recently, 65 bucks. The next one is my favorite of the three. This is the QSP Kestrel. The burlap micarta is excellent. The fit and finish is excellent. The design is beautiful. I, I really love this pocket clip. That is a titanium pocket clip, uh, 3D milled, and it doesn't look like any other pocket clip out there, uh, but it's still simplistic. It fairly deep carry, it'll have about that much sticking out. Thumb studs, flippers, ceramic ball bearings, a really good example of what QSP does well, and that's create a simple design that's going to work well for everyday tasks. It's not a huge knife, but it does fit just fine in my hands. And I've got average man size hands, that's to say large size gloves. Thumb stud works well, you can reverse flick it, you can thumb flick it, you can use the flipper tab. The action is well done. There is no backspacer, but that's okay. Uh, the milled out liners reduce weight and it indexes well. So far, I think that this one's my favorite. The burlap micarta just feels so good. The ergos on here are good. And I also really like this clip point style blade. Um, it just feels right in the hand. And I could definitely see myself getting some use out of this one uh, if I had bought this. And I think that it's pretty good. 69 bucks on this one, 69 bucks. And you get a very well solid made knife. Of course, if you use code Rollshambo10, uh, you get 10% off that, you know, make it closer to 63 bucks. You know, thank me later. Go get yourself some lunch. Um, remember those days when you could buy lunch for six or seven bucks? Jeez. Anyways, I like this one. It's sensible. It's not outlandish. It looks good. It feels good in the hand. It's affordable and you get good materials and good fit and finish for 69 bucks. And then finally... We've got this guy. This is the QSP Mini Penguin. Now, this has a pretty big name to, to live up to. You know, the Penguin is kind of their flagship knife. And if it's not, it should be because that's the one that everyone heard about before QSP really, really started gaining some momentum. And Penguins are known for having good action, for being affordable, for being sensible. And this one is no different. This would make one hell of a box cutter. This is perfect. It's gonna be easy to maintain this 14C28 blade uh, because it's a straight sheep's foot style. Some might say that because of this edge being completely flat and straight, uh, that it should be considered a Warncliffe. I'm not gonna have that discussion. Uh, you know, sheep's Warncliffe, whatever. Blue shred carbon fiber overlay on G10. This one's gonna be in the $50 price point. This is great. This is gonna be more than enough for a very decent amount of people because most people just wanna open up boxes. Maybe you wanna get a piece for your wife or yourself. Maybe you work in a shipping department. If you open up a lot of boxes, this is it, guys. This is perfect. The pinch grip on here is excellent. Is it big? No, uh, I can get a nice three finger grip, kind of four if you pop that index finger up here but it's good. It's very good. And for the money, you get everything that you want out of a penguin, just shorter. Some people really like shorter knives. Maybe you want something that's more of a fifth pocket carry. You know, this would definitely do the trick. If you're a lanyard hole guy, this would do the trick. I like that it's not like the other two. It's also not trying to be something outlandish. It just works. Thumb studs, the only way to deploy this, but you can of course reverse flick. The detent is perfectly tuned it pops out there and it clicks back in place um, it's very unassuming but it has 
nice pops. Like, for example, the the silver on that single-sided captive pivot. I really like the way that that just kind of pops out of those, you know, handle scales. It's it's nice. And it reminds you that you can have a little bit of fun while you're doing something sensible. You know, this will definitely do the trick. It's not too skinny in the hands. The grip feels good, and that's important on a smaller knife. This one will definitely not steer you wrong. Again, $50 price point. If you were to buy all three of these together, you would spend like what, 170 bucks? And here's the point that I'm trying to make. If you're trying to build your collection and you're still in the phase of figuring out what it is you like most, something like this is going to be a great opportunity to do that. There seems to be two mindsets in the knife community. You can either one, save up your money and just buy only really super nice freaking knives. Or you can buy a bunch of lesser expensive knives, but of good quality to kind of figure figure out and feel out what makes the most sense for you. And I'm actually of the second mind. A lot of people will say, no, 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 save your money. Just buy something really nice. But here's the problem with that. Let's say that you do that and you don't like it. Then you've just sunk three, four, five, six hundred bucks into something that you don't even necessarily like. And trust me when I say, it's possible to get a $600 knife that you don't like. Ask me how I know. It's much better to find a brand that's going to give you really good quality for the things that matter. Things like fit and finish, things like ergonomics, things like good blade shape, good heat treat, and good action. Because then once you've established that baseline, once once you have done that, you can go on to a more expensive knife and you'll know right away what's going to work well for you. You'll be able to look at those more expensive ones and have some context and know that, hey, you know what? If this $50 QSP Penguin Mini has such good action, I know what I'm looking for. I'm not going to make excuses for bad action at the $600 price point. You'll be much more educated. And yeah, you might spend a couple hundred bucks along the way, but shoot, you could have all three of these for 170 bucks. And I can tell you that these knives are more enjoyable than many more expensive knives that I've handled in the last year. So along the way, do you pay your dues? Sure. But you also get something that's pretty cool. Also, if you're someone that just doesn't like to buy, you know, three, four, five, six hundred dollar knives, this is probably in your wheelhouse regardless. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Uh, are you part of the crowd that says you should just save up all of your money for months on, on end and then buy a $600 knife and hope that it's going to do you justice? Or do you find the lay of the land by going through and subtly adding in nice pieces like maybe a QSP Kestrel or a Lark or a Mini Penguin? Let me know. If you're interested in any of these knives, I will post the non-affiliate links down below, as well as my discount code, which is rollshambo 10 So if you are gonna pick one of these up, save yourself a little bit of extra cash and let DNK Knives know that I sent you their way. And if you wanna see some more knife content, make sure you click on the video that pops up next.